show you how you can breathe new life into your PrinterBot Simple Pro, uh, PrinterBot Simple Pro 2016. Um, so since PrinterBot is gone, there's no more PrinterBot.cloud, and it took me a while to find all the resources to do this, but here's how you breathe life back into it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to download um, the PrinterBot Flash utility and open it up, PBFU. Uh, when you try and open it on your Mac, it's going to complain that it doesn't have the security privileges, so you just have to go into your security system preferences and click on security and privacy. And then down here, um, click open anyway, and it'll prompt you for your username and password. And then say open. Okay, here it is. It's open. Here we go. Flip it on. Drop it. Next. Next. And wait. Now, apparently, this can take up to five minutes. The timing seems to have been somewhat important. I have no idea if there is any... Uh, importance to the fact that the screen flashed? I have no idea. Probably not. So it's writing new firmware. Firmware successfully updated. Restart your dot. Okay, so now I can turn it off. The instructions I read online was that I was to leave it off for 15 seconds before firing it back up. But now is the time when I can go download Cura from their website and get that set up. So let's do that. Let's go to Cura. Cura's website. Download. You have to give it some information. And then say download. I think it's about a oh yeah, 100 meg download. Here it is. Let's mount that disk image downloads folder and then we're gonna drag this from here to there you might have to authenticate and it'll copy it from the disk image into your applications folder all right now uh, I don't need this anymore I'll give that a close I'm gonna go into my um, launchpad open Cura All right, so here we go. We're going to choose other. We're going to choose printer bot simple. We're going to call it printer bot simple pro. That doesn't actually matter, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to say add. Then we are going to change our printer settings. So we're going to go to settings, printer, manage printers. First thing we're going to do is click on the printer, machine settings. And then we're going to change our settings, which I believe are 200, 150. Make sure if it hasn't already chosen, but this is a um, build plate is rectangular, not elliptical. Um, and then we're going to change all the start and end code. I'll put uh, just links in the description about how to do that. So here's our start code. I'm just literally copying this entirely. Command C, going into Cura, deleting everything that's in their start code box, pasting this in, going into the end code, select it all, Command C to copy, select all in the end code box, Command A to select all, delete, and Command V to paste. All right, so we got our start code, we got our end code, 200, 150, 200, rectangular. These numbers I didn't change, this I didn't change, and I'm going to say close. Now, just as an aside, if for some reason your z-axis, the, pr the, um, the probe is, or the print head is coming down and not touching your print bed, or if it is way too high, you can change this number. So right now my z offset is set to 7. You could try six or five or zero, 
zero might run the head into the bed, so do be very careful. I would adjust this bit by bit until you get the correct height for your printer. Um, and it'll, it'll get a different height just based on where that probe is. All right, I'm going to close this. Um, now I'm going to... Um, I'm wrong. Machine settings. I'm going back in now. I'm going to change my extruder. It has a three millimeter, 0.3 millimeter nozzle size, so you got to change that. There's no extruder code. I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to go into custom settings here. And the only thing that you need to do is because the nozzle size is 0.3 millimeters, then you want to make these numbers a multiple of that. So instead of 0.8, make them 0.9. And that's it. You're good to go. You might want to um, actually, not entirely, it's not entirely true. You want, you want to turn on retraction. Where the heck's that? Um, probably not here. Somewhere. Nope. 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 Dual extruder. Nope. That's probably there, and I just haven't seen it. Travel? Nope. Oh, there it is. Enable retraction. It's already checked. There you go. Um, and then load up a model and give it a go. Uh, so let's, why don't we do it? Okay. There's the open button. It's in my downloads folder. Top. There we go. And this is where we ask ourselves questions like, do we need a, uh, to build support structures? Uh, luckily for this, this is nice and simple. We do not need support structures. So then we turn on the printer. So we're ready to print, everything's off, wires are plugged in, USB goes right here to the printer, plugged in, plugged into my computer, the one I'm using, and then I flip it on. Now if this firmware update has worked, Cura will now see it when I open the software. Here we go, let's have a look, and we're going to hit prepare. Life is good, so it's doing the slicing. Life is good. It's going to let me preheat. Oh, look at that. Print via USB. It worked. There we go. It's going to start pre uh, preheating, and then it'll print. It's a miracle. And that is how you bring your printer bot, Simple Pro, back to life.